that sort of highball style really appeals to me and it's sort of a nice cross which you quite often find with grit stone where it's kind of too short to be a trad route but too high to be a boulder problem you know there's an added element of a little bit of risk and danger in there which kind of affects how you climb how you approach it so it's just like a whole other aspect that you've got to think about and i, I really like that since moving to sheffield i've I've done quite a lot of new climbs and it's definitely something that I um, enjoy doing and also like seek out, you know, I'd much rather do a first ascent than repeat a route. Quite often these days it's quite slim pickings, just kind of digging around to get what's left. There are still a few real good like king lines out there so it was nice to kind of find like a big tall blank face which hadn't been done. I went out with Aiden and we were trying Smiling Buttress. It feels like you can crimp this one, whereas this one is definitely Yeah, up. you've just got more skin in contact, so it feels like you could pull a bit more outwards maybe, but I, I don't know. Yeah, and I'd levitate or something. My skin wasn't quite good enough for the small crimps, so in Aiden's rest I was having a little look at it and this was only the first time I'd checked out the moves actually. You get a bad intermediate, then do like a big slap to a <laughs> slow peak. What you stood on at that point? You... And quite quickly I linked the boulder problem and found out a way to kind of make the whole thing work. In comparison with Smiling Buttress, the climb's quite a lot taller, but the ground's a lot flatter, so I could pad it out really nicely and the jump is probably about six meters perhaps, so it feels quite committing. Up to the jump, you could probably take a fall on any of the moves, and th those probably are the hardest moves. It would still be high, but it wouldn't be too bad. But I think once you're at the jump, you definitely don't want to be taking a fall from there. With committing moves like that jump, personally, I have to just go for it almost as soon as I get there. I think the longer I stick around and sort of start to hesitate, the more likely I am to just drop off or down climb. So I kind of said to myself before I set off, like when I get to the jump, I'm just gonna quickly chalk, like give my feet a quick dust and then just sort of go for it. Mantling out, I realized I hadn't cleaned many of the holds. Um, there was a lot of skrittle and the holes weren't actually that good. Hello. <laughs> um, you, you probably want to do jammer crash. It's not really a hold over the lift. So I sort of ended up just staying in the jam and then getting a bit of a chicken wing and then just groveling over with, with Ned running around and sort of brushing the holes and <laughs> pointing them where to go. So. Yeah, definitely added for a bit of an exciting ending. Oh, I got pumped hanging around up there. Definitely. Just for a spot. <laughs> <laughs> nice to have your, your comfy words in my ear. <laughs> I was freaking out when you cut on that slope. <laughs> but like stuck that crux move to the sloper. And then after I stuck that, I was like, oh, well. You know, I may as well try the jump, and then all of a sudden, came face to face with that mantle which I hadn't tried yet. I reckon it's like probably E860, maybe. Oh, it just looks like a beaut, like a. It just looks so sick. So, I'm just I think for me, Frowned Upon's probably my proudest, like first ascent. I think it's for sure the best line that I've done. It has the best moves of any first ascent I've done. Yeah, hopefully it gets some attention in the future.